Praise God. Welcome to the online church. You're in for a treat today. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. If you've been going through difficulties and troubles and Satan's been bombarding you and whooping on you, you're in for a treat today. And for the next several weeks, you are in for a treat. Hey, Ryan Trogler, can you hear me well out there? Uh, good morning, Pastor Carter. Good morning, Brother Ryan. Praise God. Am I coming through clearly? Yes, sir, you are. Good, good. My greetings and love to you and your family. Praise God. Okay, we'll talk with you later on. Okay. Amen. Praise God. We want to ask everybody now, since we're recording, to mute your phones, and then we give you an opportunity to later on to unmute your phones, and we can chat and chew a little bit uh, after we have a message and have some prayer. I want to get into this this morning. Uh, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me to teach you, and I'm excited about this online church and what God is doing and what he wants to do with you. So let's open up with prayer. Let's pray together. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, we come before you. We give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. There is no other God but you. And so we thank you. We thank you for the online church and for the church all over the world, the brick and mortar church and the online church. There is only one church. That's the church of the living God. We thank you that you have settings where people can visit and fellowship with you and commune with you. And so we thank you. We present this worship experience to you, Lord God, and we ask that you pour out your spirit upon your people. Bless heal, save, and deliver today. You are the mighty God. We confess our sins, God. Ask that you forgive us of all of our sins. We confess any hidden or secret sins. We don't want anything blocking what you want to do in us. We thank you, Father, that the Holy Spirit dwells in every believer. Holy Spirit, rise up like rivers of living waters. We praise you. We worship Robert, and bless you and honor you, Father. We thank you, Lord Jesus. You are our Lord, our God, our Savior, and our King. And so, Father, we come before you today. Anoint these messages, Lord. Anoint your people. Let your spirit fall upon your people today. And we thank you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. We welcome you to the online church. We see so many of you out there. Praise God. And I want to ask you to mute your phones. Press star six. Mute your phones so we can uh, have a good recording for people in other lands and for people who cannot come on live with us. Praise God. We bless you. We bless you. So many um, um, people are on today, and we thank you. We thank God for what he's doing. We've just blessed God. I've got some powerful messages for you in the next several weeks. And ladies and gentlemen, if you can just uh, set aside this quality time on Sunday mornings and, and join me, God has given me an anointing. Of, I'm going to be teaching you in the name of Jesus how to deal with spiritual warfare. We're going to lay a foundation on what spiritual warfare is all about, and all of you are involved. Many of you are going to find out you're involved in spiritual warfare, and you did not know it. But now you're going to get in the know. Not only is the Holy Ghost going to reveal to you that you're in the know, but he's going to show you how to be victorious, how to get victory. Some of you have problems in your marriages. Some of you are having problems in your home. Some of you are having problems financially. Some of you are encountering difficulties with your body, with your physical being, with sickness. Some of you are having difficulties with despair and uh, disillusionment and frustration. Some of you are battling this depression, and 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 many of you, uh, Satan thinks he's got you. He thinks he's got you. He's got you locked in into a box. 
and he wants to come in for the kill. But in the next few weeks, ladies and gentlemen, if you abide faithful, if you stay in your word, if you keep your mind on Jesus, if you listen to these messages, if you open your heart to the Holy Ghost, God is going to give you the victory. It did not take, it did not come overnight upon some of you, the problems you're encountering. Your kids did not just start rebelling yesterday. Some of your kids have been hard headed from day one. Your wife didn't start acting ugly uh, just yesterday. She's been doing this for years. Your husband may not, did not start acting ugly yesterday. He's been doing this for years. Your husband didn't start cheating on you yesterday. He's been doing it for years. Your wife may not have been, uh, unfaithful to you just yesterday, but she's been doing it for years. But we're going to see what God says about spiritual warfare uh, and, and, and shut it down. We're going to get the victory that Jesus has already paid for on the cross. So we need some teachings. We need the Holy Ghost. We cannot do this without the Holy Ghost. And ladies and gentlemen, step number one, you must be born again. You must be born again. If you're listening, if you're listening on this live broadcast, or if you're listening by way of the recording, if you have not been born again, then this is the time to be born again. If you're not sure that you're saved, this is the time to be sure that you're saved. Well, Pastor Carter, how, how can I be sure that I'm saved? You can be sure by applying Romans 10, 9, and 10 to your life, that if you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. That's a promise to, by God. God is not a man that he should lie, and, and he's not a, the son of man that he should repent. So there might be somebody out there right now listening, somebody listening by the recording. You're going through trouble. You're catching hell. You're catching it on everything every hand. Well, number one, let's make sure that you're saved. If you're saved, then these promises belong to you. If you're saved, God will work on your behalf. You must be in the family of God to get this uh, power of deliverance that we're going to be teaching in the next several weeks. So we're going to make sure, if you're not sure, if you are saved, repeat this anyhow. Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I confess with my heart that Jesus Christ is your son. I believe he died on the cross. I believe he was buried in the tomb. I believe that he rose again from the dead. And I want Jesus to be my Savior, my Lord, and my God, and my King. And I receive Jesus by faith in the name of Jesus. Ladies and gentlemen, you just did what Romans, 9, Romans 10, 9, and 10 says that if you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. You're saved now. The, the angels in heaven are rejoicing. No matter what you've done in your life, no matter what's in your past, you are saved. You are now, according to the word of God, you are declared to be the righteousness of of God. It doesn't matter what people think about you, what they say about you. It doesn't matter what kind of record they have you, records they have against you over at City Hall or in the uh, 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 state penitentiary. You are born again by the Spirit of God. Your slate has been washed clean, and you are a brand new creature in Christ. And now, and, and now we can go forward. Praise God. Praise God. Now that you're born again, you're saved. The devil hates you. The devil hates you. He hates you. He's going to do everything he can to frustrate you, to separate you from the love of God. But the scripture says, ladies and gentlemen, what shall separate us from the love of God shall peril, shall famine, shall destruction, shall sickness, shall disease, shall death. No, none of these in all these things, we are more than conquerors through Jesus Christ who loved us and gave himself for us. So nothing can separate you from the love of Christ Jesus. Ladies and gentlemen, even if the devil's hitting you with everything he has, he's brought out his big uh, cannons against you. He's hitting you with his big bombs. He cannot separate you from the love of God. If you keep your mind on Jesus, I say if you keep your mind 
on Jesus. Keep your hand in his hand. No matter what's going on in your marriage, in your household, in your personal life, in your community, even in your church. No matter what is going on in Washington, D.C. or in this government or throughout the world. If you keep your mind on Jesus and realize that God will in no wise forsake you, he will not cast you out. Jesus said, all whom the Father has given unto me, I will in no wise cast out. Praise God. You say, well, Pastor Carter, we want to, let's get into this deliverance thing. Of, I've got some problems. I've got some issues. Well, welcome to the club. Everybody's got problems. Everybody's got issues. And everybody who's born again, you are a target for the devil. You've got a big target on your back and on your chest. And Satan is, is throwing his darts at you. He's shooting his arrows at you. But God has given to every believer the weapons, ladies and gentlemen, to shut Satan down. We've got the weapons. And so we're going to be talking about in the next several weeks, we're going to be talking about the weapons of our warfare. We're going to be talking about putting on the full armor of God. We're going to be talking about taking the offensive. Ladies and gentlemen, you can put on the full armor of God, equipped with the word of God, and under the anointing, under the anointing of the Holy Spirit, and you can charge into Satan's territory and get your loved ones out of his clutches. You can set the captives free by the power of the blood of Jesus, by the word of God. Ladies and gentlemen, you may say, well, I've never been a real warrior before, but you can become a warrior for Jesus. Praise God. I'm a former Green Beret. I was trained by the military to be able to go to jump to parachute behind enemy lines and set explosives in the enemy's territories and then get out of the territory. And the explosives that we set would, would destroy the enemy's camp, would destroy his villages, would destroy his, his whole operation. Ladies and gentlemen, now that's been a long time ago. That's been 50 years ago. But now I am a green beret for Jesus, and you can be a green beret for Jesus. We don't have to carry Weapons, we don't shoot machine guns, we don't shoot M16s, we don't take hand grenades, we don't take fire, we don't uh, uh, shoot fire on people, spread fire on, we don't take flamethrowers, we don't use bombs, we don't use mortars, but ladies and gentlemen, we use the powerful weapons of God. God can make you to be a green beret for Jesus. You can go into your child's bedroom. Your child is acting ugly. Your child is acting ungodly. Your child is sassing you. Your child is rebellious. Your child won't listen to what you say. Your husband's acting ugly. He won't even look you in the eye. He grumbles and complains. Your wife won't even speak to you. Your wife won't even communicate you with you. Your church members frown on you, your pastor's acting crazy, your pastor's running with other women and pretending and trying to preach the gospel. Ladies and gentlemen, you can go to church and plant an explosive. You can go in your husband's under, uh, uh, in, in where your husband sleeps, if he's sleeping with you or if he's sleeping on the sofa, you can plant an explosive. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm not talking about bombs. I'm not talking about napalm. I'm not talking about throwing oil on him and burning him. I'm not talking about hot grits and gravy. I'm talking about the weapons that God has given unto us that we can use to shut the enemy down. You can get the devil out of your house if your children are seeing ghosts, your children are seeing demons, your family members are seeing strange things, strange things are happening, you're running into trouble on your job, people are uh, uh, plotting against you on your job, you think you're under some kind of curse, witchcraft, or a necromancy, or marine spirits. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to look at how you can walk in victory and also how you can get your loved ones out of Satan's clutches. Ladies and gentlemen, if your marriage is on the rocks and it looks like there is no hope, don't pack your bag. Don't pack your bag. No, 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 no. We're going to uh, plant some explosives in your marriage. Ladies and gentlemen, if your wife is acting funny, ladies and gentlemen, she keeps running to her mother and, 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 and won't give you any attention. She listens to her girlfriends, and they're all single, and they're putting mess, mess in her head. You can blow that situation wide open. You don't have to 
get a gun. You don't have to get fire. You don't have to get any physical weapon. You can just use the weapons of God. Turn with me, will you please? Turn with me. I know you're excited. I know you're excited. I know you're, going, you're excited about some things that are going to happen. And ladies and gentlemen, if you're in bondage, if you've got some secret habits and you're sick and tired of your secret habits, if you're doing drugs and drugs are killing you, if you've got cancer in your body, if you've got sickness in your body and you know it's killing you, you can get the deliverance. You can get the victory. Ladies and gentlemen, just stick with this ministry, the word of God. God has the anointing. The anointing is going to destroy the yoke. If you will listen to these messages and apply what the Lord has given to us, you will be delivered. And, and keep this in mind. We have this treasure in our earthen vessels. God already has placed the answer in you, and the power to deliver lives in every believer. The scripture says we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power is of God and not of ourselves. Ladies and gentlemen, when God delivers you, when God sets your wife free, God sets your husband free, God sets your children free, God sets you free, God gets you your job back, you get back to work. When God brings you out of financial distress, do not give any person any credit. Don't give any preacher any credit. Don't give any person any credit. Give God the glory. God said, no flesh shall glory in my presence. God said that he will not share his glory with anyone. You give the praise to Jesus. You give the praise to God. You thank the Holy Ghost, ladies and gentlemen. Praise God. Okay, turn with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. We're going to look at some scriptures, and then we're going to build a foundation for, for you to stand upon as you go against the devil, as you fight this spiritual warfare, and you are going to win. If somebody else is with you right now, you turn to them and say, we're going to win. Tell them you're going to win. Tell them you have the victory. The victory is in Jesus. Praise God. Well, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, starting with verse 3. For though we walk in the flesh, meaning we live in these human bodies, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. Ladies and gentlemen, you must recognize and, and come to real, realization I want everybody to pull your head up out of the ground and, 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 and get your head from out of the clouds. And let's look at re realistically, we are in war. We are in war, ladies and gentlemen. There's a war going on. The war is going on in the spirit realm, in the second heaven, in the atmosphere. There are demons all around us fighting against us, trying to separate us from God. And the angels of the Lord are all around us fighting against the demon powers. The scripture says the angel of the Lord encamps around about them that fear him and delivers them. So ladies and gentlemen, you must realize you are in a war. There are so many people who are in denial, so many pastors who won't preach deliverance. They don't preach our warfare. Ladies and gentlemen, people in our churches are dying. They are gagging. Many people are fighting against problems. They don't know what to fight. It's like Don Quixote. They have their sword, waving their sword like Don Quixote at windmills, fighting windmills with wooden swords. Ladies and gentlemen, you cannot defeat the devil with a wooden sword. The scripture says in uh, verse 3, for we walk, for though we walk in the, in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strong, strongholds. In other words, the weapons of our warfare, the weapons that we use to defeat Satan, are not man-made, ladies and gentlemen. They are not carnal. They are not developed by man. They are not guns. They are not machine guns. They are not rockets. They are not bombs. They are not anything that man can make. The weapons of our warfare, uh, 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 
the weapons are not Glocks and, 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 and uh, 9 millimeters and Uzis and assault weapons. The weapons that we are to use to defeat the devil, ladies and gentlemen, are spiritual weapons. They are mighty through God to pull down strongholds. We're going to teach about these weapons today. They will pull down strongholds, ladies and gentlemen. If, if, if your spouse is caught up in adultery and, and your spouse thinks you don't know about it, you can pull down that stronghold of adultery, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to look at what Hosea had to do and how he de got his wife delivered from adultery. We're going to look at David uh, when he committed adultery. We're going to look at what he had to do in order to get delivered. Ladies and gentlemen, the answer is with God. No problem, no situation has overtaken you, but such as is common to man. The scripture says, but God is faithful. He will not suffer you to be tempted above that which you're able. Ladies and gentlemen, no matter, how, no matter how big your problem is, no matter how much money you owe the bank, no matter, no matter how many foreclosure letters you've gotten, no matter no matter how many threat, threatening phone calls you've gotten from bill collectors, there is a way of escape, ladies and gentlemen. There is a way of escape, and, and the way of escape is not to go out and rob the convenience store. Don't go out and rob the gas station. Don't go out and hold up the bank. The wow. weapons of our warfare are not man-made. They are not carnal, but they are mighty through God. We're going to look in a few minutes at the weapons that God has and how mighty they are, ladies and gentlemen. The scripture says in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. We have mighty weapons that even when your, your friends and your relatives shake their head at you, they call you names that you're, you're not uh, you're, uh, familiar, you don't want to hear. They, they condemn you. They put you down. They beat you up because you go to church, and, and they beat you up because they call you a hypocrite, a sinner. Ladies and gentlemen, no matter what people think about, and the world hates you because you're saved. The world hates the saved people, ladies and gentlemen, but we've got to walk in the mighty weapons that God has given us. We've got to walk in love, ladies, even when they hate on us. We've got to walk in love. You can win somebody to Jesus Christ through your love for them, even when they're cussing you out, even when they're hating on you. The scripture says that when the devil attacks you and accuses you and puts thoughts in your mind, uh, that you can cast down those vain imaginations. When the devil hits you with words like, you need to just blow your head up. Uh, off. Take your gun and shoot yourself. There's, you can't get out of this. You're into this so deep when the devil threatens you with thoughts of suicide. Ladies and gentlemen, you can cast down those vain imaginations when you're having dreams that you're being defeated. When people attack you in your dreams and they're beating up on you, they're defeating you. When you're hearing words and seeing visions that are negative, when Satan tries to oppress you, ladies and gentlemen, you can cast that down by the authority of the name of Jesus the scripture says, we cast down all vain imaginations, every high thing that exists, that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. When people say things and they sound good, but they're uh, above the scripture and uh, beyond the scripture, you can cast that down. You can shut down Satan's lies. You can shut down those old wives' tales. You can shut down that tradition. You can shut down grandmama's remedy. You can shut down your father's remedy. Ladies and gentlemen, all those remedies for problems that did not work, will not work, cannot work because they're not the word of God, you can shut them down. Ladies and gentlemen, it boggles my mind how people can hear the word of God, but yet uh, have to get their mother's opinion before they make a decision. It boggles my mind how people can hear the word of God, yet they want to get their drinking buddy's opinion before they make a decision. Ladies and gentlemen, your drinking brothers are heading to hell. And they're taking you with them. You've got to make up your mind. I'm breaking loose from this. Ladies and gentlemen, those people you needed 
to, for for uh, comfort, needed for uh, 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 consolation, needed for confidence. You don't need them anymore, ladies and gentlemen. We get our confidence from the Holy Spirit when we study the Word of God, when we pray, when we learn how to talk with Jesus, when we learn what our weapons are, when we activate our weapons. We don't need to confide in someone else. We don't need to check with someone else to see whether this is the way. It boggles my mind when people hear the word of God being preached, when they see miracles, when they see signs and wonders, yet they will take a, 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 a preacher's message and go run off to their, their golf buddies and their drinking buddies or, or their girlfriends and, and, and check with them uh, whether they think that message was of God. Ladies and gentlemen, the world can't can't advise you on the word of God. The world doesn't know the word of God. Satan is a liar, ladies and gentlemen. And Satan will use anyone. He will even use your spouse, ladies and gentlemen, to try to keep you from God. When, when uh, there are situations, marriages, where when uh, the spouse sees the husband or a spouse sees the wife getting set free by the word of God, they don't want to let you go. They want to keep you under their control. But ladies and gentlemen, nobody should control you. Nobody should control you. Ladies and gentlemen, we're under the control of the Holy Spirit. We are to present our bodies as a living sacrifice. We are to trust the Lord for his word. We are to humble ourselves before the Lord God. We are to get our advice from the Lord God. We are to study the word of God. Every answer that you need, ladies and gentlemen, is in the book. It's in the word of God. The problem is, and God says it so beautifully in the book of Nehemiah, he says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, for lack of knowledge of me. God knows that his people are lazy. God knows that his people don't want to read the Bible. God knows that his people, his people are proud. Many are so proud they don't want anybody teaching them. The Holy Ghost can't even teach them. Jesus can't even visit them and teach them. But ladies and gentlemen, if you want deliverance, hallelujah, you can be delivered. If you want to stay saved, you can stay saved. You may say, well, Pastor Carter, once saved, always saved, right? No, al contraire, no. Once saved, not always saved. God is not going to save you if you deny him. God is not going to save you if you turn from him and never return. Ladies and gentlemen, God is not stupid. He's not a man that he should lie. Ladies and gentlemen, God knows the difference between head knowledge and heart knowledge. God knows when someone is committed to him or when someone is just going through the motions. Ladies and gentlemen, let us not be deceived by the devil. The devil has deceived so many people. He's told them, join the church and your problems will be over. And so people believe that if they join the church, get their name on the roll, start tithing, then they can go about living any way they want to, and God's going to fight all their battles for them. No, 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 all contraire. To the contrary, to the contrary, ladies and gentlemen, there are, some, there are things you must do, ladies and gentlemen. There, it takes more than just saying, speaking words, and speaking words, and joining the church. It takes more than shaking the pastor's hand. It takes a total commitment. Ladies and gentlemen, the Bible says you must be born again. You must be born again. And so if you're born again, that means you've got to die. In order to get born again, you've got to die. I hope you're listening. You've got to die to self. You've got to die to sex. You've got to die to gambling. You've got to die to those Friday night trips to the casino. You've got to die to that uh, 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 fifth of liquor that you buy every weekend. You've got to buy, die to that six-pack or that 40, or that Bud Light. You've got to die to having two or three girlfriends on the side. You've got to die to going to the whorehouse. You've got to die to gambling. Ladies and gentlemen, you've got to put those things. You may say, well, Pastor Carter, I can't get delivered from the, oh, don't, no, no, I'll contraire. Satan, the Lord rebuke you. You can be delivered. Ladies and gentlemen, I know some of you are saying, but Satan's got such a hold on me, and I've been in this for so long. Uh, it's, it's, uh, my daddy had this problem, and my granddaddy had this problem. But ladies and gentlemen, you can say the buck stops here. It stops here. 
This is the last generation that's going to be influenced by alcoholism. This is the last generation to be uh, controlled by opioids. This is the last generation to be greedy for money. This is the last generation of liar, liars. Ladies and gentlemen, the buck can stop here. You can shut down all of the devil's activities by the authority of the name and blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Jesus said when he rose from the dead, all power is given unto me, not just some of the power, not just atomic power, not just uh, uh, word power, not just financial power, not just uh, uh, a marriage power, not just uh, educational power. Jesus said, all power has been given unto me. Praise God. So Jesus has all power, and Jesus took all power that God gave to him when he raised him from the dead, and God has given that power to you, believer, to you, believer, and to me, to all of us who claim Jesus Christ as our Savior and Lord, who've been washed in the blood of the Lamb. We have access to all this power. Ladies and gentlemen, Many of you don't have that power because you've never been taught. I was ignorant until the Lord really taught, took me into his word. And, and, and uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 10 teaches us that we have weapons, ladies and gentlemen. The devil cannot block us when we use the weapons. And the weapons are not man-made. They're given by God. Ladies and gentlemen, God will not give you the new birth, and put you in this system, this world system, to leave you alone. He did not withdraw. He did not call, uh, call his angels back from you. Ladies and gentlemen, David said, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. You've got to know that God is with you. When the bank forecloses on your house, God is with you. When the, uh, uh, your, your checking account runs dry, God is with you. Though the well may dry up, though the ravens may not bring you any meat, though there be no uh, uh, sheep in the stall, though the fig trees may not blossom, the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. The word says, I've never seen any man made ashamed who put his trust in the Lord. So ladies and gentlemen, we're laying a foundation for this uh, uh, series on spiritual warfare. And I want you all to know as the scriptures reveal us that we are in a war, ladies and gentlemen. We are in a war. The scriptures say in, let's turn to Galatians, I'm sorry, Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 6, Ephesians chapter 6. Let's take a look at this warfare and how to get dressed for it. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to look at the scriptures. The answer is in the scriptures. The answer to your marital problem is in the scripture. The answer to the rebellious child that you have is in the scripture. The answer to how to handle a, a, a lustful husband who's running around with other women, the answer to handling how to handle a rebellious wife, it's in the scripture. It's not in guns. It's not in bricks and and mortar. It's not like the guy two days ago who uh, was uh, sent, was uh, accused by the court for uh, uh, home for uh, abusing his family. He was he, he was taken to court for abusing his family, and then he got an airplane. He was a pilot. He got an airplane, ladies and gentlemen, and he flew the airplane into his own home trying to kill his wife and children, ladies and gentlemen. But they escaped from the house, and he got killed. He was killed. Ladies and gentlemen, Satan has people doing all kinds of crazy things trying to solve their problems. Got them committing suicide, diving off buildings, uh, uh, running, falling under trains, and, 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 and thinking that if they take their life, that's the answer. Ladies and gentlemen, suicide leads to hell. If you take your life, you're go you don't want to take your life. The end of that is going to hell. Ladies and gentlemen, God did not give you permission to take your life. He said, I'm come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. But Satan is so busy, ladies and gentlemen, trying to 
keep people from the word of God. Ladies and gentlemen, the devil is a liar. He is not bigger than God. His advice is not better than God's advice. The word, the answers in the scriptures, ladies and gentlemen. So we encourage you, get back into the book. Double up on your reading of scripture. Double up on your prayer life. Double up on your worship and praise. We're going to look at the weapons God has given us. But first, let's look at what Ephesians says. Paul is in a Roman dungeon awaiting to be executed, ladies and gentlemen. They eventually cut his head off. But he took time out to write to the Ephesians, and here's what he wrote in the sixth chapter, first starting with verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Paul is looking at that Roman soldier who's standing guard over him. That Roman soldier is dressed in full armor, and Paul uses that analogy to remind us that we, every day, we've got to be dressed for battle. We've got to be dressed for battle, ladies and gentlemen, because we are in a war. Ladies and gentlemen, just because it's peaceful in your house right now, it's peaceful on your job, it's peaceful in the nation right now. Ladies and gentlemen, there's a war going on. It's time for America to wake up. It's time for the nations to wake up. Ladies and gentlemen, the enemy is plotting against us. Ladies and gentlemen, just because your marriage is going lovey-dovey right now, ladies and gentlemen, dark days will come against you. Even though your children are, 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 are smiling at you right now and are being obedient, the days of rebellion are around the corner, and you've got to know how to deal with them. Ladies and gentlemen, you've got to learn how to deal when you start having dreams and, 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 and horrible thoughts and, 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 and things are happening. When your body starts changing, you might be beautiful, well-shaped, in excellent shape now, but keep on living, ladies and gentlemen. You'll look in the mirror and say, who is this, ladies and gentlemen? When you look at that person in the mirror, you've got to love that person. You've got to realize that God loves that person, that God's love never changes, and you've got to learn how to deal with the problems of getting older and aging and, and, and losing your energy and uh, uh, not being in control of everything. Ladies and gentlemen, this is life, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, David said, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Paul wrote, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Ladies and gentlemen, your wife is not your problem. Your son is not your problem. Your husband is not your problem. Your church family is not your problem. Your mother-in-law is not your problem. Your father-in-law is not your problem. Your boss is not your problem. Your job is not your problem. That car that keeps breaking down, that's not your problem. Ladies and gentlemen, we're in a war. There are demons all around us trying to destroy us, and they will use every trick they can think of to try to pull you down, to try to get you to curse God, to try to separate you from God, to separate you from reading your Bible, to separate you from pray, praying to God, to separate you from giving God the glory and honor, to separate you from your church, to separate you from fellowshipping with other believers. And the enemy is very effective, ladies and gentlemen. Over 80% of Americans do not attend church. Satan has deceived people so much that they are angry with their church. They're fed up with this. They don't like this. Uh, this church doesn't do that. And so Satan has divided people against the church. Many don't even read the scriptures. Many don't even worship God. Ladies and gentlemen, I know people who were on fire 10 years ago and are living like orphans today. They have, they have no hope, ladies and gentlemen. They've let the devil deceive them, and the problem is you talk with many of them, and they get angry with, with you because you're still saved. But you've got to love them back into the presence of the Lord. The Scripture says we're not wrestling against people. People are not your problem. 
you're angry with so-and-so, so-and-so said something to you or about you, so-and-so offended you. Uh, uh, I know a lady, she's 50-some years old, almost 60 years old, and she acts like a little 13-year-old. She once told me, I'm angry with you because you offended me. I mean, like a little eighth grader. Ladies and gentlemen, get over it. Get over it. You're going to spend the rest of your life angry with somebody because of something dumb they did or they didn't even do it or somebody said they did it. Ladies and gentlemen, get over it. There's more to life than living in anger. There's more than li to life than living in condemnation. There's more to life than wrestling against somebody. The, the, that person is not your enemy. Your child is not your enemy. Your husband is not your enemy. Your wife is not your enemy. Your mother-in-law is not your enemy. Your mom is not your enemy. Your granddaddy is not your enemy. Your uncle is not your enemy. Uh, uh, the president is not your enemy. The joint chiefs of staff commander is not your enemy. The IRS is not your enemy. Ladies and gentlemen, your enemy is spiritual, demonic. Look at what verse 12 says. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. We're wrestling against principalities. Principalities are chief ruler spirits that Satan has assigned, ladies and gentlemen, against every nation. Satan has demons assigned against this nation. How do I know? Because the Bible teaches us so. Satan is highly organized. He has assigned demons against this nation. Sandra Lee, he's assigned demons against Canada. Elijah, he's assigned demons against Kenya. Mimo, he's assigned, he's designed demons against Belgium. Anika and Richard, he's assigned demons against Sweden. He's designed, he's assigned demons against every nation. And those are called principalities. They're kings, they're rulers, they're principalities, they're prime ministers. They even get into people. They can get into the prime minister. They can get into the cabinet. They can get into the president of the United States. I ain't going there. They can get into anyone in leadership position, ladies and gentlemen. But it's not the person that you wrestle against. It's the demonic powers living in those persons and influencing those persons. It is not your wife whom you are to fight. It's that demon in her. Ladies and gentlemen, as we go through this series, you'll learn how to cast that demon out of your wife. You'll learn. Come on. I know that made somebody happy. You'll learn how to cast that demon out of your husband. I know that made somebody happy. You'll learn how to cast those demons out of your children. God has given us the authority, the power. We can do this through Christ. Ladies and gentlemen, our weapons are not carnal. They are not man-made. We do not possess these weapons. They are given to us by God. They are spiritual weapons, spiritual weapons that will destroy Satan's strongholds, that will destroy uh, the, the uh, negative things happening in your household. God can set your marriage free. You may have been married 40 years. All of a sudden, your wife wants to start going out on the town. She's starting a nightclub. She's buying tight-fitting dresses. Uh, she wants to go out and find out what she missed over 40 years. Or your husband's buying uh, nice, these little tight suits. Man, look at these little tight suits these men are wearing. The clothing is too small, gentlemen. And, and your husband, uh, your husband, uh, he's... You've been married for 40 years. All of a sudden, he gets a nice tight suit and a pair of pointed shoes, puts a hat on his head, and he's going out every Friday night, ladies and gentlemen, trying to see what he can miss. And he's acting a fool in the nightclub. Ladies and gentlemen, your husband is not the answer. I know the easiest thing to do is to take him out of existence. But no, that is not the way. The Bible says, thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not kill. Ladies and gentlemen, let the Lord do it. Let the Lord do it. We're going to take a look eventually at a man named Hosea, whose wife was so bold that she went back out on the block. She was a whore when he married her. She was a prostitute. And then she gave him three children. Then she went back out. She wasn't satisfied with her husband. She wasn't satisfied uh, being a homemaker. She went back. Satan allured her back out on the block. And she started selling her body again. 
and the man of God was left at home. We're going to look at how God showed him how to handle that situation and how to get that woman set free. He did not have to lay a hand on her, ladies and gentlemen. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Praise God. So the scripture says, Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. No matter how evil the days become, when you put the weapons of God's warfare on you, and you apply the principles that God teaches us, Ladies and gentlemen, having done everything you can do, you can stand. You can stand. You don't have to go under. Your family doesn't have to go under. You may say after six months of trying this, Pastor Carter, it doesn't work. Oh, yes, oh, yes, yes. Go into the seventh month. Don't give up. Don't quit. Don't quit. Uh, Moses was at the... Red Sea with Pharaoh's army coming down from one side and the Red Sea facing him at another side. And Israel wanted to give up. Moses, let's surrender. Let's go back to Egypt. Let's go back into slavery. And then God told Moses to tell the people, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Some of you haven't gotten to the place yet where you can stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Don't panic. Don't get frantic. Trust the Lord. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. The Bible says, and having done all, stand. Verse 14, stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth. Put on the belt of truth. Having on the breastplate of righteousness. Realizing you're saved, you're called, you're declared to be the righteousness of God. Ladies and gentlemen, Satan will tremble. He'll fear. He'll be afraid when he sees you coming at him with a breastplate of righteousness on and on the breastplate you're saying i am the righteousness of god satan can't deal with you and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace ladies and gentlemen take those two hundred dollar shoes off and and put on the the shoes that will speed the preparation of the gospel of peace above all taking the shield of faith wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. No matter what they're saying against you, no matter what they're talking about you, uh, no matter what they're saying, no matter what lies Satan is putting out on you, you can quench. No matter what darts he's throwing at you, no matter what uh, thrusts he's making to try to take you down, you can hold up the shield of faith and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit which is the word of God. Ladies and gentlemen, put on the full armor of God. Well, how often should I put it on, Pastor? Once a month? No, put it on every day. Every day when you wake up in the morning, put on the full armor of God. Don't expect God to dress you. You're grown up now. Put on the full armor of God. Declare it and decree it. Declare, I put on the full armor of God. By faith in the name of Jesus, ladies and gentlemen, then praying with all prayers and supplication in the Spirit. We're going to talk about praying with all prayers and supplication in the Spirit. We're going to introduce to some of you uh, speaking in tongues. I want you to go back to my YouTube messages over the last two months. And let's, talk, let's uh, study those on what, what the power of the gift of tongues uh, parts one, two, and three, and how to speak in tongues, and how the enemy flees when you pray in tongues. Ladies and gentlemen, well, my, my church doesn't preach about tongues. They don't believe in it. Well, your church is not believing in the full gospel. Ladies and gentlemen, we preach the whole gospel. The gospel talks about the power of tongues. Every, well, everybody ain't supposed to speak in tongues. Right, you're right there. No, everybody doesn't speak in tongues. But if you can get the gift of tongues, if God gives it to you, it's a mighty weapon. You don't have to speak in tongues, but if you do speak in tongues, we're going to show you what God has given us about how the devil flees. He can't handle tongues. That's why he fights tongues, ladies and gentlemen. Put on the full armor of God, praying in the Spirit, praying in the Holy Ghost, praying, letting the Spirit pray through you. Romans 8, 26 and 28, we'll study that, ladies and gentlemen, how you can pray in the Spirit. 
how the Spirit will pray through you. But you're actually praying. The Holy Spirit prays. He says the words. You're letting him use your voice. You're doing the actual praying, and the Holy Spirit is partnering with you, and the Spirit is praying in the perfect will of God. Ladies and gentlemen, we're talking about spiritual warfare. Well, we've laid a good foundation on it today. We've laid a good foundation on on spiritual warfare today and I hope I've gotten your attention I hope the Holy Spirit has gotten your attention that you're in a war you're in a battle the war was declared when God kicked Adam and Eve out of the Garden of Eden and Satan was relegated to crawl on his belly for all of his existence permanently and when God spoke to his people in Genesis 3:15, he told Satan, I will send one and he will bruise your head and you will bruise his heel. Ladies and gentlemen, when God sent that prophecy about the Messiah, Jesus Christ, who would come and deliver the world, Satan has declared war against mankind. Ladies and gentlemen, if you get a chance... Uh, uh, send for a copy of my book, The Giants Are Back. We're looking at the giants, the giants that ru ruled the earth before the time of Noah and why God had to flood them all out. They are back, ladies and gentlemen. And in this book that I've written, we describe how these giants are attacking people, destroying people, destroying marriages, destroying nations. But God has given us the power and the authority to win. Ladies and gentlemen, the end of this book, this book that I teach from, it's called the Bible. The end of this book says we win. We win. Thanks be unto God who giveth us the victory. We win. So no temptation, no problem, no issue, no challenge that has come upon you. Second Corinthians uh, 10, 13. No problem that has come upon you uh, shall subdue you, will overcome you. It, no problem that has taken you is uncommon. It, these are problems common to man. But God is faithful. God will not suffer you to be tempted above more than what you can handle. You may say, well, you don't know. How my, uh, my wife's situation, her affairs are killing me. My husband's affairs are killing me. My children and their rebellion, this is killing me. This cancer is killing me. No, no, no. All contraire. All contraire, you can flip the script, ladies and gentlemen. Let the Holy Ghost in you flip the script. God says to all of us who follow him, who believe in Jesus, Jesus said, out of your innermost being shall flow rivers of living water, ladies and gentlemen. Rivers of living water. Jesus said, I am come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Ladies and gentlemen, we have life in us. And more abundantly, ladies and gentlemen, it's up to you to learn how to release the rivers of living water. Release the rivers of living water. We will study this in the next few weeks, how to release the rivers of living water, how to cast out demons in the name of Jesus. Even you can practice self-deliverance, cast them out of yourself. That is practical. Ladies and gentlemen, you can lay hands on the sick in your household and in other households and in the name of Jesus and they shall recover ladies and gentlemen no weapon that is formed against you nothing no weapon nothing that these powers and principalities and ruler spirits and spiritual wickedness in heavenly places as powerful as they are they are not more powerful than the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost lives in every one of us. So ladies and gentlemen, wake up. Wake up. Wake up and put on the full armor of God. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Do -do 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 -do. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Do -do 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 -do. Wake up, church, and blow the trumpet in Zion. Sound the alarm in God's holy mountain. Tell them, victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. I told Satan, get thee behind me. Victory today is mine. You can have the victory, ladies and gentlemen, because Jesus already paid the price. Jesus already paid 
the price for us. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to stop the, the, the uh, presentation at this time because we want to pray for you. We want to pray for you. But next week, we're going to talk about uh, many of the ways that Satan attacks you, uh, many of the things people are experiencing. Uh, we're going to look at a plethora of ways in which we are involved in spiritual warfare. And then we're going to look at the many, many weapons God has given us to shut the devil down. Ladies and gentlemen, we're talking about walking in victory. We're talking about walking in victory. We're talking about walking free with no chains around us. We're talking about walking in free, ladies and gentlemen, free from demonic possession, free from demonic uh, 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 influence. We're talking about free. Though the world is going to hell, though the world is falling, crumbling around us, we can live in perfect peace, and we can get our loved ones set free. We can even get our enemies set free, ladies and gentlemen. So stick with this ministry, stick with, stick with this word, and um, we will be giving you um, um, ways in which you can live successfully, how you can fight as a good soldier in Jesus Christ and win, ladies and gentlemen, and win. Praise God. Father God, we thank you for this message today. We thank you for your anointing. Thank you for your people and their attention. Thank you for their hunger for you, thirst for you, for their desire. Holy Spirit, rise up in each one, in each one, Lord God. Thank you that our hearts are teachable. We love you, Lord God. We thank you that greater are you in us than he that's in the world. We thank you that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. We thank you that in the name of Jesus, you have given us the victory. We worship you. We love you and honor you. We bless you, Lord God, and we thank you. Now, Lord, we ask that you stretch forth your mighty hand, heal the sick, deliver those who are bound, set at liberty those who are bruised, set the captives free, do mighty works, Lord. Let's, let signs and wonders accompany your word. Lord, we decree that signs and wonders will accompany your word, and we thank you in Jesus' name. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. Praise God. Praise God. We're going to um, stop the recording at this point so that you're not recorded.